Joining me now is Maryland Governor Wes Moore, a member of the Biden campaign's National Advisory Board. Governor Moore, welcome back to Meet the Press. Thank you for being here. Great to be with you. Thank you. Well, uh, let's start off by talking about African-American voters. The polls show there has been this erosion of support amongst black voters as we just mapped out and you heard them there say they don't some of them don't know if they're going to go out to vote why do you think there is erosion this erosion amongst black supporters well i I think there's a there's a frustration and a cynicism and i think it's long-standing you know we we have to remember uh you know my my grandfather was was born in this country and when he was just a toddler the ku klux klan ran him out of and my whole family out of this country and I'm now standing here as his grandson, as the 63rd governor of the state of Maryland and only the third African-American ever elected governor in the history of this country. The reason I bring that up is because history does matter. Mm -hmm. And so when we look at the fact that in in, in Maryland there's an eight to one racial wealth gap, that's not because one group is working eight times harder. When we're looking at drastic differences between unemployment rates or how cannabis was used as a cudgel. Uh, against black communities so it's been so long in our nation's history that's a reality and so I think that the thing that the president uh, is, is showing that when you look at the president doing things like rescheduling cannabis from, ske- from yeah. schedule one to schedule three uh, having the largest pardon for cannabis convictions having a you know having the, the largest growth in black owned businesses for black men in 30 years we now have a president who's actually doing something about it about these systemic challenges that we've been facing well and, and yet some black voters feel as though he has not done enough, has not done enough on police reform and voting rights, for example. And you're seeing this show up in the polls where there is this real enthusiasm gap, Governor. And when I talk to uh, Democrats, they say this is really a five alarm fire, this erosion of support, this erosion of enthusiasm amongst black supporters. What does President Biden need to do? Does he have enough time to change the dynamic? Well, I mean, we we know that these challenges have been longstanding and the solutions are not going to come overnight. The thing that I know, though, is I have the right partner that I need in the president. When we think about the work that we are doing, uh, you know, just taken in the state of Maryland by being able to now have the lowest unemployment rate that we've seen for African-Americans in our state's history. The fact that we've been able to increase wages that have had a disproportionate impact on the African-American community. You know, these are things that have that really matter, focusing on work, wages and wealth. And President Biden has been the partner that all of us have needed and all of us have been asking for to be in, to have inside this work. And of course, the big news this week is that President Biden agreed to debate former President Trump. Right now, there are two debates scheduled. They're putting tradition to the side, going around the Presidential Commission on debates to do it. Do you think President Biden agreed to this debate format to shake up the race? No, I think he agreed because he's got a record to tell. I think I think President Biden has a story to tell about how we're creating economic momentum, having having historically low unemployment rates by being able to break inflation from what we have from historically high rates, uh, at least in, in recent history, uh, rates and the leadership that he's been able to show to actually create an economy that benefits everybody. And frankly, I'm looking forward to hearing Donald Trump talk about something other than himself for the first time in a long time. Well, let me ask you about something that unfolded this week, President Biden's decision to assert executive privilege over the audio recordings of his interview with special counsel Robert Herr and the investigation into uh, his handling of classified documents. Of course, he wasn't charged with a crime. Uh, Here is what President Biden said about transparency at his very first press conference after taking office. Take a look. So I'm running for three reasons. To restore the soul, dignity, honor, honesty, transparency to the American political system. How is asserting executive privilege over these audio tapes consistent with his promise of transparency? Well, I think the the DOJ has already released the full transcripts, the hours uh, of transcripts of interviews that were done. The, the, The GOP now has everything that they need to conduct any investigation should they choose to. The, the reason that they want the audio is a purely political reason for wanting the audio. You have the transcripts. And that, by the way, was a historic step for them to be able to offer the transcripts as well. I hear you saying that, but since they released the transcripts, 
Why isn't the president allowing them to release the audio, too? Is he concerned about people hearing his voice, hearing his answers? And is that not inconsistent with his promise of transparency? No, I think the American people hear the president's voice every single day. Uh, but the idea that this is being done or this decision is because of a lack of transparency, uh, it just doesn't hold water because the full transcripts are there. They, they, they have everything that they need in order to conduct any investigation that they should choose to 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 do this is a political this is a political game that's playing played right now all right let's talk about the big news in your state one of the big pieces of news the senate race the former governor republican governor your predecessor larry hogan made big news this week by coming out and saying he would support uh... codifying abortion rights into law and of course, Angela also Brooks, the Democrat who you support, just won her Senate primary. How concerned are you that Larry Hogan throwing his support around codifying Roe v. Wade could cost Angela also Brooks the election? Well, I'm, I'm excited about Angela also Brooks being my partner in the work and our next senator. I endorsed her early and I was proud to. And, and I don't think what the old governor said this week was news because I think people in our state are going to be able to distinguish between, uh, you know, what he is saying now that he's trying to get back into politics versus what he did when he was actually in office. This is a person who, when Roe v. Wade fell, under his watch, when he was governor, he vetoed legislation to increase privacy for women. He vetoed legislation that increased abortion protections for women. When I, on my first day of office, I released three and a half million dollars of previously unreleased funds because the old governor wouldn't do it for political reasons. And I think people in our state are going to be able to notice that what he's saying now is, is not just disingenuous, um, but, it's, but, it's, but frankly, it's, it's the same type of problem with politics that he rails on. He's actually the prime example of what people are so frustrated about. I have to ask you about the Key Bridge. I know that there's going to be a, a big development tomorrow. Talk to us about that and also the criticism from Republicans who are saying they do not want to support federal funding to rebuild the bridge, particularly if it is not matched with offsets. Yeah, I, I, you know, the, the, I remember that first morning when the bridge fell. People were, were saying that, you know, this thing could take six, nine months to be able to re-clear the channel. I mean, we have a ship that's the size of three football fields that's sitting in the middle of the Patapsco River. Uh, and, and I remember we made four commitments uh, and, four, and I had four directives to support the families of those six Marylanders who we lost, to make sure we're supporting all the workers and first responders that were impacted by it, to be able to get that key bridge rebuilt and also to reopen that federal channel. And despite the fact that people said this could take six and nine months, uh, I'm proud that, uh, that we're on track, that by the end of May we'll have that federal channel reopened. And within, within days, we're going to have that massive vessel, the Dolly, out of that federal channel. And I think for people who are concerned about the cost, my, my thing is this, the American people will be made whole on this. Uh, and we just have to make sure that we had to get it done fast and on time and on budget. And that's our focus. All right. Governor Westmore, thank you so much for being here in studio. We really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.